the Supreme Court has gutted, and gutted is the word that the Huffington Post is using, and I think it's a perfect word, uh, the Voting Rights Act. This is amazing. So our question, were voting rights just sent to the back of the bus? And for that matter, should the Supreme Court even have this kind of power? Here's what Eric Holder had to say about this today. After extensive After hearings, extensive hearings sec sections 4 and 5 of this important law were reauthorized most recently in 2006, just seven years ago, with the unanimous support of the United States Senate and the year near unanimous support of the House of Representatives. This is a uniquely legislative function and responsibility that the Constitution expressly gave to Congress. So uh, Joe Madison is with me, host of the Joe Madison Show on Sirius XM, weekdays 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Channel 110. His website, joemadison.com, and Twitter at Black Eagle Power, uh, at Black Eagle Power. Yeah. Joe, hey. And soon to, I guess, put on my um, activist hat because... Um, Clearly, what this decision by the Supreme Court is going to require mm -hmm. is for us to form now coalitions yes. and, and demand of Congress that they um, reinstate this, that they do what they did in 2006, uh, because it clearly now is in the hands of, of uh, Congress. Uh, you know, it's a devastating decision, but... Uh, before, and I don't call them conservatives anymore, I've come up with a new term. They're re well, they're the opposite of progressive. Uh, regressives. There you go. That's exactly what they are. <clears throat> this takes us back to pre-1965. That's regressive. Yeah. Um, but, but what we, what I think before the, the, the far right, the regressives start to celebrate, they need to be very careful. Because what the Supreme Court said is that the Congress has to remap this. Mm -hmm. They now have to look at the jurisdictions. Society has changed. You know, votes, uh, are, the people are voting now more than they've ever voted before. Although I, I ha uh, hasten to add that when they talk about African Americans voting more than whites in certain states, and you look at states like Texas. There's no statewide African American elected. Mm -hmm. Georgia, Alabama, uh, most of these states, you know, uh, do not have uh, African Americans who have won statewide elections. Mississippi, you, you just had a, a gubernatorial race there, and the African American who ran was soundly defeated, I would say in large part because he was. Uh, African-American. Now, there hmm. might be folks who would say other reasons. But look what happened in Wisconsin. Voter ID. Right. Ohio. Voter suppression. Right. Pennsylvania. Voter suppression. Right. Congress could look at those states. Yeah, or look at, look at what's going on in Michigan and or Detroit Michigan, and Flint and Benton Harbor. That's absolutely right. And could look at those states and say, okay, maybe we'll take away uh, Alabama, but we're going to add Michigan. Right. See, you could add, yeah. uh, with this decision, you could add these states. But the bottom line is we're going to have to get busy. Uh, this is a coalition of whites, blacks, Native Americans, Asians, um, Latinos. Latinos, particularly Latinos. So this is where we now have to demand of Congress that they do the right thing immediately. And, and we don't have until 2023 to do it. This has yeah. to be done now. On the, at the same time, though, you've got a House of Representatives that is controlled by Boehner yep. and Cantor and the yep. Republicans, and their religion is voter suppression. I mean, this, this is That's you right. know, down in Florida in 2000, you know, knocking 60, 80, 90,000 African Americans off the voting rolls before the voting even started. That's right. Gives George Bush the presidency. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you remember you had a former Republican chairman in, in Florida. Right. I think I had him on my program twice who said he walks into a meeting, there are cons paid consultants, and they're talking about voter suppression, right. how to prevent African Americans from voting, right. uh, suppressing their vote. And they were paying these consultants to do that. And he became a whistleblower, and of course he was kicked out of, the, uh, out of his position and probably kicked out of the Republican Party. 
I mean, uh, you look at uh, the modern day at attempts to suppress the vote, this voter ID, because we want to prevent voter fraud. And there is what zero point zero 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 one percent of voter fraud in in most of the most of the states. In essence, non-existent. Yeah. More people die falling in their bathtub. Yeah, exactly. Than You've fraud. got it, Tom. You've got it. In fact, in fact, yeah. the number the last number I saw, more people die having their television fall on them. Really? Then commit voter fraud. Can I yeah. use that on my Please show? Please do. I've been using <laughs> I've been using it on my TV show for about a year. No, I mean it's, this is this is. Uh, but but uh, it's a it's a it, it's a decision. I must tell you, a lot of people, particularly in the civil rights community, are disappointed. But in all honesty, they weren't terribly surprised. Right. The person that disappoints me more than anyone is Clarence Thomas, yeah. who's from the state of Georgia, who who, by the way, we spent most of our morning talking about his concurrent decision mm -hmm. that he issued in reference to Fisher versus the University of Texas, Austin, mm -hmm. where he keeps his Yale college degree with a 15 cent stamp on it because he says it was only worth 15 cents. Well, he when he was because being confirmed, he, he said he was the, he, he used affirmative action to get into college. Well, he first of all, he was given an, you know, here's the argument about this. Sure. You and I go to college together. Right. Maybe they see, they give me an opportunity, but they give me an opportunity to compete. No one at Washington University, St. Louis, ever handed me an affirmative action exam. There you go. No one. There you go. Damn it, I had to go to the same lectures. Yeah. I had to f fill out the, s in those days we didn't have computers. We had to fill, you remember the old blue oh, yeah. thing? Yeah. The, the, you know, I had to do the same essays. Yeah. I had to compete in the same classroom. Yeah. Um, and, and, but do you think that when he got his law degree, do you think when he was being sworn, when he was being um, vetted and confirmed, that he suggested that that was affirmative action law degree. Matter of fact, let me tell you an honest to goodness story. I was on the board of the NACP. They wanted the NACP's endorsement. Benjamin Hooks was supporting um, Bush's nomination of Clarence Thomas. The board was divided. We sent a committee to go talk to Clarence Thomas about his position and particularly on issues like affirmative action. He sat there and told a, a committee, a delegation that went to his home that he was 100% behind affirmative action. Really? Yes. And, wow. I can, and I can name the people who went to the home. And when they came back to report to the 64-member board, that was one of the first questions asked. What is his position on affirmative action? And he said he was 100% for it. And now he's going 100% uh, David Koch. He lied. Yeah. He just simply lied to get the endorsement. And here's a man from Georgia... Well, I guess it shows that there are people who don't have integrity of all races. That's right. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's simply it. And in, in such a close decision, five to four. But I think that this is maybe with the anniversary of the uh, 1963 March on Washington, maybe this is the time now for all of us to show up like they did in 1963 and show up by the hundreds of thousands. Can you imagine what would happen if we all showed up in, in that anniversary, that famous anniversary 50 years ago? Yeah, we could do something. We More could do with something. Joe Madison right after this. We'll be right back. 15 minutes past. That. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Check out Joe's website at joemadison.com. More with Joe Madison in just a second. 